Alrighty, everybody. We're going to be talking about uh, some new features here in SharePoint 2013. Uh, some of these features, <laughs> she is ignoring me already. Some of these features are going to be things that are enabled um, via SQL Server 2012, and I'll try to point some of the, the requirements out here as we go. Um, but these are all going to be new things that you can do with SharePoint 2013. So hopefully, some of you guys have at least got to gotten to play around with it a little bit. It's been been out for a little bit over a year now. And I've actually started to see some of our customers that I'm, that I'm going to starting to actually have implementations of this already in place. So um, it actually is, it's definitely becoming more and more prevalent now that it's been out for, for a little bit. Okay, so uh, my name obviously here, I'm, I'm Bradley Schacht. I'm a consultant and trainer at Pragmatic Works. Uh, I blog on my website, bradleyshack.com, as well as bidn.com. And I also uh, have my blog over on SQL Server Central. Um, I worked on a couple of books here and there. I'm currently finishing up a SQL Server 2014 book. Um, no new BI features there for you guys really to care about, um, but definitely a good book if you're uh, looking for some DBA stuff there on the on the SharePoint side. And I do a lot of speaking events, like uh, workshops like I'm doing here in Atlanta this week, as well as uh, webinars and, and the like for Pragmatic Works as well. Okay, so first question here is why should we upgrade to SharePoint 2013? Well, it's the, the new kid on the block out there. You know, everybody, everybody seems to have a, a little bit of a fear of upgrading too early to, to new Microsoft products for some reason. And I, I think that, um, uh, you know, a lot of companies like to wait till Service Pack 1 comes out in order to upgrade, but I've, I've seen a lot of customers, as I mentioned, already using 2013. Uh, there's no Service Packs out, of, out for it yet, but um, even from the very beginning, you know, I, I never really had a, a period of time with, with 2013 that I really felt uncomfortable recommending uh, customers go to SharePoint 2013. You know, a lot of, sometimes there's some bugs in the products when they first come out, which is to be expected from software. But um, I think uh, 2013 is a, a really solid release, and it's got some really great features that, like I said, I'm going to show you guys today around the BI side of things. So lots of really great stuff in there for 2013. So some of the things we're going to talk about today. We're going to discuss some of the central administration improvements. There have been some minor improvements in performance point. There haven't really been a whole lot of uh, new developments on the performance point side of things in quite a while. So I'll show you some, some little new features that we can uh, do there in 2013 for performance point. <clears throat> Excel services has gotten some really awesome new stuff. I know there's a, a good bit of you guys said that you were using Excel services, so we'll, we'll definitely touch on that. And we'll also look at some new features in there called PowerView. PowerView, actually, you could get in the SharePoint 2010 environment, but I do want to show you some improvements that there were with the Excel 2013 and how that translates over to SharePoint as well. So not a whole lot of new stuff on the reporting services side. Um, there are data alerts in, in SharePoint 2013 now. I don't think I'm going to have time to show that, but I will definitely, uh, if people are interested in the, the data alerts there, I can point you to a really good blog about it, or um, even potentially I'll put something out on my blog a little bit later about that particular topic. All righty. <clears throat> so a couple of uh, really nice improvements that we had in the central administration side was we had some improvements with the unattended service accounts. We'll talk about the dreaded Kerberos word, the K word that nobody likes to, to discuss because it makes everybody go crazy. Um, don't leave the webinar, please. Just because I say Kerberos, I'm actually going to show you something that's going to make your life much, much easier and was a really awesome improvement and actually eliminates the need for me to set up Kerberos in my SharePoint environment in some situations here for business intelligence. And then also I'll discuss with you guys the new reporting services service application that we have here inside of this new environment. Okay, so without further ado, let's hop over to my virtual machine here. I'm going to hop over to my VM, and on this VM, we're going to start over here in central administration. I'll show you guys a couple of these new improvements here, and then we'll get into some of the Excel and then Power Pivot features uh, as well. So central administration, the first thing that you guys will notice whenever we log into central administration or really any portion of our SharePoint environment is that we have a little bit new, a little bit different look and feel than what we've had in the past. So they've kind of upgraded this, uh, the look and feel here to be more that modern UI that Microsoft has really gone to across the board. Uh, still the, the same ribbon up here at the top, so we still have our browse and our page in central administration. If we go over to, to a regular SharePoint site, which we'll be at in just a moment, we actually do still have the ribbon up there at the very top of, of that screen as well. 
overall, though, central administration is laid out the exact same way. Of course, just a little bit of a facelift here. So first thing I want to show you guys is the improvements around the secure store and creating new unattended service accounts. So if you guys have ever tried to do any SharePoint administration or set up any of these new service applications, one of the things that's always very important is to get make sure that your um, make sure that your unattended service accounts are set up properly. And what the unattended service account does for us is it essentially maps a user's credentials over to a secondary account that is then used to access the data. What this means for me is that I no longer, me as the user, I don't necessarily have to have access to the data. I, can, I don't have to give individual users access to the data. I can give a single user account access to the data and then map all my user's credentials over to that. So let's show you some of the improvements here. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the application management section here so that we can go in and take a look at our service applications. Okay. So inside the application management screen, under service applications, what we want to do is click this manage service applications option here. Okay. Once we're in the manage service applications section here, what we can do is click on our secure store and then this shows us all the entries once the screen loads here. It's going to show us all the entries inside of our secure store service that we have on our SharePoint server. You're going to notice one in here for, for performance point, one in here for power pivot, and one in here for Excel services. And while that's loading, I'm actually going to have... Okay. So what we do here, and again, these this is where we set up the account that gets mapped. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit this hit the checkbox next to Excel, and then I'm going to say set credentials, and then on the resulting screen here that comes up, I'm going to enter the credentials that I want to use to access my data. So this is not the user that's going to be opening up my Excel worksheet. This is the user account that's going to access the data. So this is, this is where we're telling it that I don't care which user opens up the Excel workbook, this is the account that I want to access my analysis services cube or even maybe my SQL Server database. Okay. So previously, in previous versions of, a, of a SharePoint here, what we had to do is we had to come in here, we had to click the New button, we had to go through this whole wizard in order to create the unattended service account, and then we had to go back over here to the Application Management, 